Oxford. Travis, can I ask you the first one? You had to live the journey against Geelong for those losses. What does that one do? What does that say now to, to you guys and also the competition? Oh, the, the losses have always been pretty tough against Geelong. I mean, it's, uh, they've been a great side for, for um, you know, a number of years now. And I guess for our group, it, it just gives us a lot of confidence. I mean, it was, a, it was another big build-up. Uh, and I guess it's just great to be involved in big games like this again. I mean, in front of 50,000 uh, fans again, it's, uh, you know, that was probably unheard of three years ago. And uh, it's great to be involved in that atmosphere and the build-up. And uh, to get one back on Geelong, is, it just gives us a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, we're taking it... Uh, you know, step by step, and it just uh, you know adds a little bit more to the group. And um, you know, we've got another big challenge again next week, and we've got to back it up. Ken, is that the biggest turn you can make in this journey? You keep talking about this is you've turned into a, another pretty good street now, so to speak. Um, no, look, I don't know. We, you know, if we sit back and look at it, we say, yeah, it was a really strong performance today against great quality. The opposition were, you know, a fantastic team, as Travis mentioned, and you know, we had to be at our absolute best. And you know, we we appreciated the fact that we were able to play that way in this competition. We've gone to West Coast last week and played. We've had three games on the road. We've had some big build-ups, and we've been able to handle the pressure most of the time. And you know, we've unfortunately lost the the game against the Kangaroos. So we've been able to handle the pressure. It doesn't. I mean, it's hard because it's round six. It still doesn't say too much about what's going on for the rest of the season. You know, if your thoughts about that semi-final and half-time. Did you relive it today because of what you've thought about it? I just, no, not... My, my answer is a little bit because I just wanted to reinforce what we had to keep doing. And I just wanted to stay true to what we spoke about before the game with the players and, you know, they showed that they wanted to stay the same way too. So, you know, we're able to, to handle a little bit better. But again, I think that just shows that we're, we're taking those little steps along the journey. It's still a, you know, still a way to go, but we're taking them little steps. We, we get those challenges thrown at us and we learn from them. That's the key message. We just talk about the game now and we want to learn things from that game again. So what did you want to say at halftime this time? Oh, no, I just wanted to back in what we were planning for and, you know, we, we'd, it got us in the lead at halftime and if we could stick to that, hopefully it was going to hold us in good stead by the end of the game. But the fact that you were able to um, kick on with it and get the win as opposed to last year where the side sort of fell away a little bit, it's, it's an observable sort of measurement of the size development you're in? Oh yeah, sometimes. I mean, we, we were here, we were at Adelaide Oval. Look, it counts for a lot for our supporters to have them here and, and in our corner. From a player's point of view, it's, uh, I'm sure they, they grow a little bit from that. Last year we played them at the G, they've got their supporters and you know, they certainly grow from that as well. But for our boys uh, to, to feel the, the excitement around the ground from their, uh, th from their supporters certainly helps them, I reckon. And that's, you know, it's a different game next time we play, obviously, and you know, who knows. Captain, Travis, how much as a captain do you feel that responsibly or challenged to play the game the way Ken's always asked it to be played and also to have a lead that everyone else has to follow? Yeah, look, I mean, the, the thing Ken's uh, driven into the leadership group is, is standing up game day. And uh, it's, it's not only me. I mean, I don't feel it's, you know, just on my shoulders. I mean, our leadership group's been fantastic uh, in the last year and a half. And, uh, you know, for, for, for Ebo to play the way he has, uh, he's been fantastic. And, and Tommy Jonas and, and Loeb's in the ruck probably doesn't get enough credit. Mm. And, it, it, it doesn't feel like I, you know, I have to do too much. I mean, it, we, we all do our little bit as a leadership group, um, and that's that's the beauty. We just have to stand up when, when it counts, and, and that's what our whole leadership group has done. And, and for the rest of the group to follow, I mean, it's, uh, it makes my job so much easier as captain because uh, the, the, the guys are just so driven, and um, you know they, they know exactly what Ken wants, and uh, you know pretty much I just uh, reiterate what, what Ken says, and then and the, and the guys just go out and, and do it. And that makes my job so much easier as captain. But, but you set the standard, though, don't you? Yeah, we, well, look. As a leadership group, we do, um, and yeah, look, I just have to go and play, um, you know, as, as Ken wants to, and as as we do as a group, and, and and that's how we do as a leadership group. And Chris Scott just said he wouldn't argue with anybody called Port genuine contenders now. Um, how, how does that sort of sit with you? Is that another? Is that the next phase in your development to handle that sort of expectation? Or um, no, look. Again, I, I don't think so. I think the answer is that we have to again play well next week. You know, and the hard part about it is that you know we, we want people want to mark us on our start of the season. It's been really strong. It's been really good, and it has us up the top. So it puts us in a in a good position. But we have to defend that now, and that's what we have to be able to do. Great sides like Geelong and Hawthorne do it all year. You know, we, we still do that, and that's what we're we're setting out on next week to try and do again is try and turn up and play the way we need to. What about the outside expectation of fans and the public? And that? That's 
look, that's stuff we don't control. I've said that before. We don't we don't control the outside expectation. We control the internal stuff that we we expect ourselves to turn up and play well and and be brutal and hard and ruthless in the contest. That's what we expect of ourselves, and hopefully that's what our fans expect of us now. And we we can deliver that more often than not. Can how easy is it, Matthew Lobie, making it for you to play just one recognised ruckman? Um, pretty easy. I've got to say, he's. Uh, it's amazing the way he, uh, he he has to carry the load that he does last week in Perth, uh, this week back here. You know, he's, he's going at it on his own to a point. Jacko's helping him out. Occasionally, Westy's helping him out. But certainly makes us that running team that we, we want to maintain. And it's really important for us. But Loeb's is a you know, fantastic soldier for us. He just keeps going. I wanted to actually ask about Jackson Trengo. Is he a defender of Rucks or a Ruckman who defends? He's, he's a got def a leap in that centre. He's circle, a isn't defender. It? Very, very good tall defender who actually can help us out in, in the ruck, which is really handy for us because, uh, you know, Homsch in our side has made a significant difference to our, to our ability to be a bit more flexible down back. And I think you've seen him today. We've started on uh, Bartel at some stage, Homsch, and, you know, the, the, the defenders are becoming very, very flexible with who they can go on to. Ken, the most obvious thing looking on was the evenness of the contribution of every line in tonight's game. Yeah, that's, that's a great result. And I'm glad that people acknowledge that because it doesn't just take the midfield group, the back line group, or the four. It takes them collectively together to work as one, you know, be predictable to each other. And when they're predictable to each other, they come together as a great footy side at the stage and uh, you know, they're able to put on performances that make us proud. There also seems to be a lack of reliance on stars and on, on yeah, it's, single focus. Uh, it's, it's hard, isn't it? For, for people to call players stars or not call them stars, I don't know. We've got a we've got a, a really good team, and I think that's what we want to be is a really good team. Travis, to that question about expectation in the other direction, you've had to live when Port Adelaide had every name thrown at that was at the other extreme. What's it going to be like now that actually you get some praise and some acknowledgement of what are, what you're about? Yeah, look, it is nice to hear that, but we we can't control it, as Ken said. I mean, for our group, uh, as I said, they're so driven, and um, the best thing is the challenge for us now, we, we just got to keep backing it up and, and our group just loves the challenge and, and that's why um, you know we keep improving each week and uh, as, as Ken said we've got another big game again next week and, and for us it's the challenge and, and the boys just thrive on that, we, we come out each week and, and you know train harder and uh, work on our craft each week and that's all we can focus on and, and all we can control. Justice, why do you think you are so driven? Oh look, I think a, a number of things. I mean, a lot of this group has been through a hard time, um, and I mean the, the the seven or eight years that uh, we've been through has been pretty tough, and uh, we've tasted a little bit of success, and we want we want to get back there. And uh, but I think uh, credit goes to a lot of our recruiters as well. I mean, we've brought in people um, who are great players, but also great people that just want to improve, um, and uh, that's that's just the beauty of it. We've just got great people around the club, and they just want to they just want to win, and they want to improve each week. To what extent does that tough time help keep a lid on things? Because the excitement, you can sort of feel the excitement with, amongst the crowds and around the state sort of grow with each win. Um, but as you say, you know, you can remember back to when times weren't so bright. Does that help sort of keep a lid on it all? Yeah, look, we, we don't really uh, watch too much of the, the outside and, and well, look, as I said, we can't control it. And, but the, the thing that, that, that uh, makes it like that is, is the group just want to keep improving and, and that's all we... I know it sounds boring, but that's all we can focus on, and that's all we worry about. And, and the challenge, and the excitement of the challenge each week is, is what uh, you know we we love, and that, that's why we don't get ahead of ourselves at all. What was the crowd like? Unbelievable. Uh, it's been like that uh, every game we've played here, and we we love playing here. It's the the atmosphere when you run out, uh, you know, first time just for your warm up is like you're you're running out in front of fifty thousand, and uh, just the the noise that, that just stays in is. Uh, it's great to be involved in, and uh, you know when we kick the goal, when we kick goals, and, and when we get a little run on, it's just uh, unbelievable, and it gives us a little bit more edge. And I think for our fans, it's uh, uh, they need to know how important they are to this group, and uh, they've they've been fantastic in the last year and a half, especially, but uh, who who have stuck through the tough times, and now we're trying to re reward them as well. So what you asked for, Ken, for the crowd to have their part in the game, you feel that. They're doing that. Yeah, that I do. is actually a genuine. Oh, it's 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 massive. I don't care what anyone says. The, the the crowd are still an important factor in the game for us. People will say I'm being a bit silly. The crowd has nothing to do with it. I think from a, from a playing point of view, it's been a long time ago for me. But th they must feed off that energy, you know. And sometimes you're looking for some energy, and sometimes that's, it's going to come from unusual places. Hopefully, it comes from winning hard, contested balls. But hopefully, sometimes it also comes from the support of their fans, and they're, they're out there honouring them and playing for them, and. You know, and they're, they're giving that back, and I think that certainly helps the team. As a vision of the game you want Port Adelaide to play, 
I mean, you, you know, you'll tell me perfection's impossible, but yeah. how, how are you on that tracking towards perfection? Ah, oh, well, I suppose we go through, we talk through the room and we go through some stuff in there and there's, there's 14 or 15 things I wrote on the board and we go, OK, we want to do some more stuff to, to keep getting better. As I've said before the game to someone today, that when you give up thinking you can still get better, you, you end up in all sorts of trouble and we're not going to do that. Ken, Chris Scott said he made a few mistakes today. Um, did you make any? Uh, I'm sure I did. I'm sure we did. I'm sure the players, I'm sure that we all made a few mistakes. I think it's what pressure does to you sometimes. And unfortunately, or fortunately for us, we were able to capitalise on most of the ones that we were forcing them into perhaps a little bit and we didn't get hurt too bad. Any, any injury? Uh, no, all clear. Young's all no, clear. Young's fine. You've got a whack on the shoulder, yeah. but he, I asked him at three quarter time and he's right to go, so no dramas. Seven days on, Montfrey's become more realistic? Uh, Montfrey's will play this week. Okay. Unless something goes wrong between yeah, now and yeah, the next game. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Thanks guys.